Restaurants are able to boost revenue because servers are able to have more time communicating with the customer. They can upsell drinks and specials and things like that, as well as drive more revenue to the business. The company has also uh, a hospitality robot for cleaning and foresees opportunities ahead in airports and even senior living facilities as the labor shortages continue uh, is expected to continue for years to come. So often at times what you'll find is that when you go through some of the worst when you go through some of the worst things it's an opportunity for you to innovate. It's an opportunity for you to find a solution. But you can't get there until you experience whatever the problem is. If they weren't having labor shortages, if they wasn't protesting, I think that these things would have came into existence eventually, but they're speeding up the process and the opportunities for growth often comes as a result of the biggest things that you go through. Um, this article talks about Popeye's cutting hours and going drive through only amid the labor shortage. Popeye's cutting hours and going drive through only amid the labor shortage. Now, I've been seeing this in real time in a lot of different places. Rita likes to go and get her coffee in the morning. Um, it's a Tim Hortons right out there outside of my window. Literally can walk right over there. But at times in a lot of these different places, a lot of these different places, we're going to get to Tesla, Sharice. We're going to definitely get to Tesla. You got two of those hoodies. They dope, ain't they? Sean's hoodies is dope. But a lot of times we go to these different places and they close early. I've been having conversations with y'all on this platform about how it's a lot of different businesses all across the country that's losing a ton of money right now because they are they can't find the people and they can't have the staff to go along with it. So let's get into the article a little bit. And then I want to share with y'all some of the solutions that some of these people are coming up with and how other companies are getting rich solving for where they see a void in the marketplace as far as the people that are having problems with their businesses. And that's how you really, really get to the bag is because you become available to solve for problems. You solve for problems that are anticipated or that are visible in the marketplace and that's where you fill your hole. I was having a conversation about this with some of y'all pitches and some of the pitches that people were giving me is already a robust marketplace for it or it's stiff, super stiff comp uh, competition for it. And so I'm like, yo, why are you trying to reinvent the wheel or why are you trying to compete with Apple or this company or that company in this particular marketplace, you don't need to necessarily do that. So um, 40 percent, hold on, almost 40 percent of Popeye's, more than 3,400 U.S. restaurants have closed their dining rooms early to cope with the labor shortage, meaning that they're only running drive throughs um, said on an earnings call. And this was something that was come you know, conveyed as a part. It's, it's a big earnings week. You have Facebook earnings, Snap earnings, um, Ford and GM. I think they do it on Wednesday. Where do I find my articles? Um, I'm on Business Insider. I'm on Market Watch. I'm on Wall Street Journal, Entrepreneur, TechCrunch, uh, Bloomberg. I'm on all of these different sites. All right. Finance.yahoo.com. That's the only thing. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing that I turn on on my TV in the office is um, I go to YouTube TV and then I turn on Squawk Box and all of that other type of stuff, right? But these locations are operating in what the company calls reduced service modes. Now, the thing that I always become curious about is that do they lose sales as a result of not having a dining room open? Because sometimes making a certain type of adjustment in order to fit a narrative can, can lead to a revelation. If they haven't saw a shortage in sales, because I haven't seen uh, Chick-fil-A close a lot of their dining rooms and it's only drive through only. If they haven't, if the sales haven't reduced and profits are up, similar to the automotive companies, right? They're selling less cars, but they're selling for higher, higher markups and profitability. Is it a blessing in disguise? And then do you need to adjust your business business model to fit that narrative? Or is it just a a blip in the radar just because of what we're seeing in the marketplace today. But let's continue. Um, we saw it 
in the context of reduced operating hours and service modes, especially around late night. Oh, no. Hold on. Let me get back to this. Especially around late night. Why do we keep doing it? All right, here we go. Um, especially around late night. Locations have cut hours generally um, at night, late night times with the average Popeyes now open one hour less per day compared to the pre-pandemic levels. Cutting late night hours isn't good for Popeyes bottom line. OK, so they answer my question because those orders tend to be larger than at other times of the day. So they saying at the time that they need staff the most is the time where people order the most. And ultimately, that's affecting their bottom line. OK, so they completely dispel what it is that I was talking about. With these latest earnings, Popeyes is saying what executives and analysts have recently said about McDonald's and Domino's. Now, one thing that McDonald's have done is that they've continued to innovate and and revamp exactly how their experience is as far as different people coming through and experiencing whatever it is that they're doing. So, for example, um, McDonald's went through a phase where they completely revamped their drive through line, their indoor dining. When you go into a McDonald's and even if you get a coffee. Most people walk up or they order on the app or they walk up and they use the little kiosk and things like that. And so McDonald's continues to innovate as far as offering different options so that they don't lower or reduce the amount of revenue that they can take in considering whatever it is that they have to adapt to. Sales are lower than they could be, could be because chains don't have enough workers to meet the demand. Business owners across the industry say they're unable to find staff and in some cases even cite a lack of desire to work while workers say they can demand better pay and benefits in the tight labor market. We talk about the great resignation, stagflation, all of this other type of stuff, hyperinflation, the whole thing. Right. So let's continue. Let's continue. Let's let me share a different article and a different take so that we can also have a conversation about how a lot of these places are choosing to solve for these same problems that they're they're experiencing on a regular basis restaurants prep for long-term labor crunch they already knew it you know you know the interesting thing about what's going on now is that they already had a preview for it once people start protesting at 15 dollars an hour they already had a preview for it once people start protesting at 15 dollars an hour Jason Lee says, um, good morning, Anton. Do you think automated truck driving will be a reality in the near future? I think that they're racing. They're racing towards it, right? When Tesla unveiled their Tesla semi and they're trying to automate. The problem with automation is that a lot of times you need the infrastructure to go along with it. And so regulation, infrastructure and your government bodies often at times will slow this down. Whereas where you see over somewhere like China, right over in China, they spend a heavy amount on infrastructure and not just talking. Right. They build in whole buildings in no time over in China. So but the interesting thing about what you're seeing people turn to as far as solving for the labor shortage and the problems first started when places like McDonald's and all of these places started experiencing the pushback as far as people protesting for $15 an hour. So instead of McDonald's saying, yo, we're going to give you $15 an hour. What they did was they said, all right, we're going to start developing and coming up with solutions to where we don't need these people. We don't need these people. Let's continue. Uh, restaurants prep for long term labor crunch by turning the robots to work the fryer shuttle food tables. And I've been reading articles that were much more extensive as far as what these restaurants are doing to solve for this. But this is just one one example. So Inspire Brands Innovation Center in Atlanta, the flippy robot is taking on a new challenge. The automated worker made by uh, Miso Robotics first came into the scene as a burger solution. Now it's frying wings for the first time. The robots or the bots known as Flippy One and Two have been in development for nearly five years. What did I tell you? Uh, taking on pilots as brands such as Cali Burger and White Castle. The wings iteration is being tested at Inspire's Buffalo Wild Wings as a way to solve um, or to ramp up uh, production and speed. So not only are we going to solve for the labor issue, we're all also going to solve for the fact that they faster, they don't get sick, they don't call off. The only thing we need to do is ensure that this thing continues to run 24 hours and pay the electric bill. Let's go. Let's talk about it. 
Our strategy and our vision for automation is not really about labor shortage. Cap. Cap. It is about labor shortage. It's moving things faster. It's increasing revenue. Okay. It's all about how we can increase our capacity. Really, really good marketing team. Uh, VP of operations that inspire. Uh, the automation that we are looking at will allow us to unlock that and provide faster food to our guests. They ain't got to worry about training nobody. They ain't got to worry about people bringing their kids to work. Nobody showing up drunk. None of that. Only thing they got to make sure is that the machine, the electric bill is paid and the machine is clean. Um, but the labor shortage is unavoidable. Recently reported that four and five operators are understaffed. That includes 81% of full service operators and 75% of limited operators. Robotics can help ease the staffing challenges and speed up operations. So, for example, they go into a fix for the fry station. It's one of those jobs that's tough to do. It's repetitive, it's monotonous, it's dangerous, and, and people getting burned by the, getting scalded and all of that. Humans make mistakes. They get sleepy. They come in high. They just smoke some trees before they got there. They're not feeling it. They get mad at their manager. All of that, right? You ain't got to worry about nobody spitting in your food no more. Um, so it was a perfect opportunity for automation robots, robotics to step in and help brands like Buffalo Wild Wings. The robots can cost up to $3,000 per month. Now, that's the one barrier to entry, right, is... How much or what's the cost of doing business? Because when you start to factor in how much it costs to truly train people, how much it costs to retain staff, whether or not you even going to have people, which means that it'll lower the capacity that you'll be able to serve people. Three thousand dollars a month. Miso expects to it can cost up to not necessarily that's how much it costs. It expects to participate in a dozen pilots with restaurant with top restaurant chains in the next few months. And while Flippy can work in the back of the house, uh, Maitre D from uh, Rich Tech can bus and wait tables. Are y'all ready for robots to be busing and waiting y'all tables? Y'all ain't got to be dealing with people no more. The bot, which retails for up to twenty thousand dollars, which is not a lot when you talk about the cost of a robot and you'll be able to have it forever has been tested at restaurants, including California Pizza Kitchen. Our food runner basically allows servers to serve a lot more tables and customers to get their food faster. Restaurants are able to boost revenue because servers are able to have more time communicating with the customer. They can upsell drinks and specials and things like that, as well as drive more revenue to the business. The company has also uh, a hospitality robot for cleaning and foresees opportunities ahead in airports and even senior living facilities as the labor shortages continue uh, is expected to continue for years to come. So often at times what you'll find is that when you go through some of the worst when you go through some of the worst things it's an opportunity for you to innovate. It's an opportunity for you to find a solution. But you can't get there until you experience whatever the problem is. If they weren't having labor shortages, if they wasn't protesting, I think that these things would have came into existence eventually. But they're speeding up the process and the opportunities for growth often comes as a result of the biggest things that you go through. 